Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory on Update 5. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to do the final uh, leg, if you will, of our Advanced Steel production. Um, so, before we get started with that, I do want to make an announcement. This video that you guys are watching will probably be the last video that I'm going to do until I return from my business trip, which will be on January the 10th. That's the day that I return. So, uh, I just, it's been really busy with the holidays, with some family stuff going on, and, um, yeah. So, uh, I just haven't had time to, you know, keep going with this and get the daily videos out like I was for a while. Uh, but I am definitely planning on continuing the series, and um, <clears throat> it's just going to, there's just going to be, you know, a period of, uh, you know, from the time that you guys see this video, which will probably be December 31st, January 1st, somewhere around in there. Uh, until I return on the 10th and as soon as possible after I return on the 10th uh, then we'll resume the series so I just want to let you know that didn't want you to think I'd you know I've given up on the series uh, because there's been such a long break it's just been been a busy time okay so uh, we got that out of the way uh, what the hell is this over here oh that's some coal all right uh, we have some coal left over from our I guess our little demo that we did the other day do I have any room to put any of it in here I don't Oh, what did I just put in there? I don't know. Uh, what about this top one here? That's pretty full too. Okay, well, we'll just throw the rest of that in the in the sink then, I guess. Um, so yeah, we have uh, two production lines that we're gonna set up. Uh, we're gonna set up the reinforced uh, beams. So everything, uh, I'm sorry, the encased industrial beams. Everything that you see in here, we kind of just made with um, a makeshift, you know, temporary setup, and I'm just storing these because we're going to need them, you know, as time goes on. And then, um, where is my, oh, do I not have a bin just to dump stuff in here? I guess I don't. Okay, uh, I have one down below. Uh, so yeah, we're going to set, sorry about that, <laughs> scatterbrained a little bit. Uh, we're going to set up in case industrial beams, uh, which is going to be the simpler of the two. And then we're going to set up a motors, um, we're going to set up a motor production line. Uh, also, uh, again, I've been temporarily making motors, uh, and we have almost a full thing here. But uh, I'm going to set up a permanent production line with these because, A, we're going to need them for other things, and, B, they are the best, uh, the highest point item in the advanced uh, steel tier to make for the sink. Can't remember how many points they give, but um, it's a lot. Um, it's, it's more than anything else that you can make in the um, the advanced steel production line. Um, also, I, I realized that I made a big mistake. <laughs> Can't take me anywhere, you guys. I made a big mistake. All uh, all of the, um, let's go look at this. All of the uh, versatile frameworks and, well, yeah, I guess all of just the versatile frameworks that I had made, I then turned around and put them all in the sink like an idiot. <laughs> so I have to set up another temporary versatile framework to get those 2500 <coughs> which i'll do off camera because i've already done that and i'll just i'll probably just afk and let let them <coughs> finish offline and then uh, you know to get those done so anyway yeah whatever <laughs> shit happens right um oh yeah we we're gonna put some more lights in too uh that's on the to-do list it's not gonna happen today but yeah it's on the to-do list okay so anyway goodness let's get started with uh our encased industrial beams uh, because this is my last episode that I'm going to do for a while until I get back on the 10th, um, we'll probably make this a fairly long episode uh, because I want to get both of these production chains set up in this video. And it's going to take us a little while. Um, so, yeah, here we go. All right, so let's start from the end and work our way back. So to make in, in, in case industrial beams, we're going to need... Uh, assemblers and I want to have two assemblers running this is our permanent setup again so let's go into here and we're gonna grab um, a couple of assemblers and we're gonna set them up uh, with the output this way and probably uh, I'm trying to remember how much space we're gonna need let's start by setting them up well if we hold them all the way back here how about if we go like halfway between this tile here, okay? Um, and that's going to be the halfway point, and we'll put one right next to it. 
except for, yeah, there we go. That kind of gets in the way of this. You know, this is actually decorative anyways. It's really not needed, so we're just going to pretend that's not there. Okay, so we got those two set up. Uh, now, we want to set them both up for, uh, we're not going to use the alternates. We're going to use the normal recipe. The normal recipe is a little more expensive, but it's also faster. We get six per minute with this one, whereas the other one's only four per minute. Okay, uh, so we'll set those both to encased industrial beams. All right, now, to make encased industrial beams, we're going to need steel beams and we're going to need concrete. Okay, uh, so to make steel beams, we're going to need, um, I believe, another assembler. We already have a, a steel beam, a pure steel beam going. No, actually, I think we can use constructors for that. Uh, yeah, okay, so we can use constructors for that. So now what we have to do is we have to decide how many... Um, I, I'm going to try and do this without uh, any overclocking, um, at least not on, on the end machines. I want to try and match these inputs as closely as possible. So if, if we have to overclock some, some of the lesser machines, or the I should say the intermediate machines, we can do that. But I don't want to overclock these. I want to try and run them as they normally would run. Uh, for one thing, I don't have a whole lot of um, power cells anyways. Okay, so anyway, we need 24 steel beams per minute to keep that guy happy. All right, so let's go grab ourselves a constructor here. And we're going to set this up. Uh, let's see. I want to try and line the constructor up. I guess, yeah, let's line it up with that hole there. And we'll set it right there. Is that going to give us enough room? It's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. All right, so let's, let's actually move the constructor back to here. Okay, now we want to set these to steel beams. This is going to produce 15 per minute, so that's 30 per minute. And how many do we need? We need a total of 48 per minute. Okay, so if we put another one of these in, that uh, and set this, that's going to give us 45 per minute. Uh, so three of these will will do that. 45 per minute, and hmm. Is that even lined up right? It's not. Damn it. Damn it, Jim. Okay. So, yeah, we want it to be over one here. I thought we were holding it back to the center of that tile, too. Okay. Yeah, let's, um... I'm not going to worry too much about exact spacing. I just want to figure out how many machines we need first, and then I can kind of fine-tune the spacing as needed. Okay, so let's put those three there. Okay, so these will produce 45 per minute. We need 48 uh, per minute for to run both of these assemblers. So what we could do is overclock these just, you know, See, if they're going to be 45 and we need 40, yeah, we just overclock each one of these to produce one more. Um, and that should work. And that's just a, such a small overclock that it's going to hardly have any impact at all, I think, on our power. It is going to take the shards, those, the thing. The other option would be, would be to put a fourth constructor in and then underclock them. Um, so we'll, mm, you know what, I probably better... I probably better know how many shards I actually have because that's going to affect how we're going to plan this. Okay. Um, you know what? We haven't looked at any research or anything for a while yet either, but I, I don't want to mess with anything else until we get this advanced deal done. Okay, so that's just all there is to it. All right, so let's go into here. Uh, we have two power shards here, and we've got three purple power slugs and three yellows. So we can make a bunch more. Oh, and we got. Oh, yeah, shoot. We, we can do a lot, man. There's no reason not to turn all of those into power shards right now, so let's just do it. Fantastic. That gives us 30 shards to work with. That's good. That's good. So now we can plan this whole line um, uh, using overclocking to make it as efficient as possible. So it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so um, let's... I'm not going to put the shards in right now because if we end up having to move it, then... Um, Actually, I don't know what happens. I, I'm assuming we get our shard back, but I'm, I guess I'm not 100% positive on that. Uh, okay, so anyway, we got that first one lined up there. 
you know what? I'm hmm, thinking it might look better to. Now nah, let's just yeah. I'll worry about that off camera. I, I'm t I'm thinking about exact positioning. All right now, I just want to get the machine set up and show you guys the ratios, and then I'm going to build act, do the actual building of it off camera. Because I mean, you've seen you've seen this enough now to to where you know how conveyor belts go in and elevators and that sort of thing. Okay, so anyway, let's see. So we got so these guys are going to handle the steel beams. Um, I guess I have to reset that now because I did move them. And we're going to overclock them so the, between the three of them, they will provide uh, 48 steel beams, uh, which is exactly what these guys need uh, So because they need 24 per minute. Okay, so we got that figured out. Now, the concrete's going to be easy on this because um, we're just going to run concrete in from over there. Uh, so I've got a concrete line already set up out here. Um, it's just kind of sitting there and waiting. Uh, we got a Mark III feeding um, 240 concrete. No, 420 concrete because that's a Mark II. I upgraded that to a Mark II. So that should be outputting. No, no, that no, 240. Yeah, sorry. Um, that's on a pure node. So that should be outputting 240 and then it's being split on Mark II. So now we have 120 coming up that way, 120 going this way. And we don't even need 120. We only need 60 in total, actually. Uh, but we'll bring, you know, we'll we'll just have more coming up for now uh, because you know we might need more of that concrete for something else later on too okay uh, I could even put that on a mark one belt now that I think about it uh, but it, you know I don't think it's gonna matter okay so anyway we got that set up so we got the concrete covered and we've got the beams covered so now what we need to do is we need to figure out what we need to cover the beams for these guys so we're gonna basically need on uh, 180 steel ingots between the three of these to cover them for the beans and uh, beams. And now that I'm looking at this, uh, we actually have a lot more room, so we could actually pull all of this back a little bit too. But here again, I'll figure that one out on my own. Now I was kind of wanting to. Uh, no, never mind. Forget I forget I just said that. I didn't say anything. You guys didn't hear nothing. Okay, so. Now, let's just put a foundry down. Beep, 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 talk. Talk, OG. Okay. So what do you output? You output... Uh, we're not going to do the alternate. We're going to do the normal just because we're already set up for it. Uh, so you output 45 per minute. And what did we say? We needed 180. Okay. So that's going to give us... Oh, I need more frames. All right. Let me go get some frames. Okay, so um, two of these is 90. We need 180. Two of these, uh, two of those are 90. Proper grammar, please, OG. Um, and so we need four. Okay, so four of these running together will output 180 ingots. Those will go into these three constructors, and I'm just going to manifold everything as usual um, because they each need 60 per minute, and then. They will output, uh, and I'll hook the concrete up, and yeah, we're good to go. Okay, so we have all the machines we're going to need to set up a an encased industrial line here. Um, so what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, now you know how you know what <clears throat> is going to happen. It's just a matter of me putting it together nice and neat. And again, I'm not going to show that on camera uh, because you've seen it before. A and B. Um, I got a lot of stuff to cover in this episode, and I don't want it to be extremely long. So I will bring you back when I have this all set up. See you in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, I'm not quite finished yet. I, I forgot one very important uh, piece of the encased industrial beams production line, and that was concrete. Um, I set it up for, for I, I was I set it up to send the limestone to the uh, assemblers, and then I realized, wait a minute, they need actual concrete. So uh, what I've decided to do is put a couple of constructors up uh, in the production chain, up on the platform, and, and overclock them to 200%, so they produce the correct amount but what that means is we need 180 limestone coming into them and right now we only have 120 so I think what we have to do then to get that to work is we're gonna have to overclock our miner so let's go down and take a look at that so this is all um, mark 3 because we ultimately want to get 180 um, going in there and so a mark 2 can only handle 120 this is also a mark 3 
So if we, what we basically want to do is we need to set this to 300 parts per minute um, in order to get the desired effect. Um, so we're going to take and put one of our power cells in there. And if we just take this to 150, oh, that does 360. Okay, yeah, uh, we, there we go. That's what we need right there, 125%. So what will happen is um, this will only ever feed 120 per minute because of the belt limitation. And then all of the extra should be pushed up through this belt and send 180 along. I believe that I did that correctly. Okay, so now let's go back and get those concrete constructors set up. Yeah, I, I for some reason I just thought, oh, all I have to do is send the limestone up there and we're good. And it's like, uh, no, it has to be concrete. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I've got that line running in through here. I'll mark three down here. I put this little hanging thing up here just to make it look like it's supported from the ceiling, even though it actually isn't. That's more just a visual thing. And then these are running uh, all the way around here into two constructors. This is all mark three. Then this is mark two because um, we, uh, 45, we only need 90 in this other side. So that's a Mark II belt, but everything else is Mark III up to there. And then I think uh, both of these should be, yeah, these are both Mark II lifts, which is what they need to be. Okay, good. Let's go back upstairs now. We're almost done with this, this setup. Okay, so I've got both of those there. Let's, um, fill the hole back in here and let's get some power going on them so how are we gonna do that we might want to run a connection from here actually no let's yeah from here to here and then we'll run a pole um, I guess to well I don't really want to put that right in the middle so yeah we'll put it right there I guess and then hook that up and hook that up okay now what we need to do is we need to set these to 200% so if we put a thing here um, we're gonna actually need two to go to 200% because uh, right now it's 15 per minute we want this to do 30 per minute okay um, and now, because of that, it's going to take in 90 per minute. And that's why we had to overclock our miner so it would output 180 per minute. All right, so that's good. Now we need to do the same thing on this side. Because the other option, of course, was to put four of these constructors up. And I just didn't want to take up that much room. So I could have done that too, but it is what it is. Um, it, this is less efficient power-wise though but we got plenty of power so yeah we're just going to run with it it is definitely less efficient power wise because four constructors in total would use 12 megawatts now i'm using double the power to the the, the pay the trade-off is double the power for half the space that's really what it boils down to um you know well you know we do have the room to do that though i suppose we could have put more up there but now nah, let's just run with this i don't want to redo it <laughs> I don't want to redo this. Okay, so now we just got to get the concrete hooked up. Um, so let's get that going. I think what we'll do for the concrete is we'll go up. Um, and these can all be Mark 1. So let's go up 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And actually I want to turn that that way. One, two, three. Turn that way. All right, let's put a splitter on here. Oh, no, I didn't do that right. We want the... Oh, that's an... Oh, right, that's an input. Okay, never mind. We did do it right. So that goes there. And this one goes like that and again all this can be mark 
one because it's just taking in here I can't get into the thing there whoop yeah it's just taking in 30 per minute so mark one's gonna be fine so hook that into there and then this one uh, what we want to do is grab a lift so let's see, you're outputting 30 per minute, right? Yeah, okay. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Is that right? Yep, yeah. okay. Um, we will put a splitter on this one. With the, yeah, like that. Uh, we'll put a merger on this one with the output going this way. And then we just got to get this hooked up. So if we grab this and go to here. Uh, is that lining up with this? Uh, actually, I want it to line up with this one. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to, I think we're going to need to do this. And go back to. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's zoop these up to there and then run a mark line to uh, one line to he here. Oh, I that didn't line up right, did it? Yeah, it did. All right, so what's the deal here, man? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm running. Let's run out of here to there. And then from there, nope. <laughs> it's, sometimes this thing is so squirrely into there. Oh, I made those too high, didn't I? How did that happen? Uh, wait a minute. That one is showing two of the little black things. This one is showing two of the little black things. Am I going up too high on this? Yeah, I think I, I think so. I think we're all we have to do is take this one off. See, now that's too low, though. Why in the hell doesn't that match up? That's really odd. That's really odd. <laughs> See, it's lined up perfectly with that. But if I set it in here, it's too high. That doesn't make sense. I don't understand why that's not lining up. It should be lining up perfectly. That is just bizarre. Um, how do we fix that? I don't know how we fix it. This has got to be something simple. What if we do this and go back to that way? I mean, we're going to have the same problem, though, aren't we? Because this is going to go upward. It's either going to go up or down. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. These are one meter platforms. That's what's going on here. Okay, so instead of four meter platforms. So I think what we need to do is take and put another... See if just all we need is one more one meter to get that to line up. 
Okay. So that's in line there with that. So we want to go two this way. And then make sure it's lined up here. I think. Wait a minute. Is that the right spot? No, I think it needs to come forward one more. There. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's see what it does now. That looks correct. Okay, yeah, that's what it was. I'm on one meter platforms here instead of uh, the four meters, and so that affects the uh, height of the of these guys here. Okay, so we figured that one out. All right, so we got the concrete coming in. These guys are outputting 30 per minute because they're they're 200% uh, overclocked. So we know we're feeding in 180 per minute. They're outputting each outputting 30 per minute. Uh, so we have 60 per minute coming along uh, a Mark One belt, and then those are both just manifolding into these guys, which are taking in 30 per minute. All right, now I made it. I made an executive decision. Uh, while I was building all this, and that was that I decided not to, to overclock these guys. So we are actually three product per minute shy of what we need. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want to expend three power shards. Oh, actually, we don't need to. I'm not thinking about this correctly. All we need to do is overclock one of them, not all three of them. I was thinking all three of them and, and bump it up by one and I'm going I don't want to spend a power shard to bump it up by one but if we just put one in one and bump it up by three then we're good again um, so the question then is what's the best one to do that because everything is manifolding down to here and then coming back out of here and it's it's being split into here so it might make sense to make the center one the manifold I can't remember what belt I put in there but what are we talking about? We're talking about 48 per minute. So even, you know, a Mark 1 can still handle that. Okay, yeah, so let's do that. Let's overclock just one of these. And we just need to bump this up to 18 per minute. And then we're good. Okay. Um, that means that we're 12 per minute. We need 12 per minute more on the steel ingots, though. Okay, so in that case, let's do the same thing. We'll go to We'll go to this one, I guess. Cuz everything's manifolding. Yeah. So we just need to overclock this one by 12. Um, okay, so that means this needs to be 57 per minute. And I think I did that right. Okay, so let me double check here. So you, you need 48 per minute. So what we're doing is we're feeding you with these three uh, 15 and 15 is 30 plus 18 is 48 plus 18 is 48. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. We got that set up right. Okay. Good. And then that means that you need an additional 72 per minute so you need 12 more per minute so you're doing 45 you're doing 45 is 90 you're doing 40 whoops uh, 45 is 135 and then you're doing 45 is 180 plus 12 more 45 57 yeah okay I think we did that right because we had we had to add 12 more to this one and we were able to do that with just two power shards instead of more I just wasn't I was thinking about it the hard way is basically what it amounted to all right this is done well all we have to do now is just set up some storage 
and we have our permanent encased industrial beams production line so let's grab a storage container and I think what we'll do is we'll just stick it this way now at some point I'd like to um, make an actual storage room uh, so I'm gonna have to think about how that's gonna work um, yeah let's put this right here that might be a little bit close but let's just see what we're doing okay what are you outputting six per minute yeah so everything here can be mark one um, so let's put a um, oh, we don't actually need a lift on that at all uh, what we're gonna do is let's see fine yeah put a lift there Put a lift here. Yeah, that is going to be too close. Okay, splitter here. Come on. Yeah, that is so weird trying to get that to connect on that. And then a merger here with the output going this way. There we go. And then just mark one that into there. And then all we have to do is grab this and line it up again, but hold it out. See, that's where we had it. I wonder if we can actually make that work. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. In fact, we can hold it back even one more. Why don't we? Just because we can't. Very good. And then we just have to throw a Mark 1 into there. And boom, it's a done deal. And here comes our encased industrial beams. All right, you guys. So that sets up our permanent encased industrial beam line. It's a beautiful thing. And I think I have it uh, operating at 100% efficiency. So I love it. Okay. Now, um, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at what it's going to take for one single permanent motor production line and um, it's a lot <laughs> I mean if we're, if we're gonna make one line you know from start to finish okay so let's start with an assembler and uh, what am I short on I'm short on rotors let me go get some rotors okay so this is gonna be the same kind of thing we're gonna just set up the machines and figure out the ratios and then I'm gonna build it uh, again off camera so let's set an assembler right here. And we want to set this to motors. Okay, so uh, working backwards, we need, uh, let's do the, uh, let's do the stators first. Okay, so we're going to need 10 stators per minute. Uh, so that means we need another one of these. Uh, making stators and this outputs five per minute which basically means we need two assemblers and again I'm not really worried about how these are positioned necessarily right now I just want to figure out what we need okay so so we have two of you making stators outputting uh, a total of 10 per minute which is what we need okay so that takes care of that um, now we need rotors so for rotors um, we're gonna need Uh, encroaching others clearance oh I have it too close probably right I don't know why does it say that oh you know what I think it's the hub down below shit okay yeah I have to figure it out that one too I mean we have we have room to move this way too so I'll tell you what let's just put uh, let's just put these here for now okay so how much do you output when you're making rotors four per minute how many do we need uh, we need 10 per minute. So what I'm thinking is two of these overclocked um, to produce a total of 10. So we'll probably have one do four and one do six. So we get the 10 per minute. Okay, so we got that taken care of. Uh, that gets us our 10 rotors and our 10 stators per minute. Okay, now let's go back to here. So um, since we're kind of on this end, what do we need to um, make rotors? 
Okay, we're gonna need constructors doing screws and rods. All right, so let's grab a constructor. And uh, we're just gonna set it right here. Again, not worried about the alignment right now. Um, I think we're gonna need a total of four to get this to work right. Two, three, and four. Okay, so let's set you to rods at 15 per minute. 15 per minute. Now, what do you guys need? You need 20 per minute. All right, and you uh, need 20 per minute. Okay, so we're, we need 40. We're producing 30. So I think we overclock both of these to uh, take in uh, to produce five more per minute. So they so they both produce 20 per minute, and that and then that means we have one machine uh, per assembler. We don't have to merge anything or anything like that. Okay, so that takes care of those. We just have to overclock those by five product. Um, we do have to pay attention to what that's going to do for this. So now we're going to need 20 iron ingot in per minute instead of 15. So that's that's pretty easy to remember. Okay, now uh, for these guys, we need to make we're going to make alternate screws. And those give us 12 and a half per minute, so we're making 25 per minute in total. Remember, this, this is just for the rotors now. Uh, and we need 100 per minute. So that means we either overclock these by 200% or we put four of these guys in. It's going to be much more efficient power-wise to do four. Um... I'm running out of space here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to figure out how the space part of this is going to work. Okay, so for now, let's just put two more here. Okay, so you're going to be doing alternate screws. You're going to be doing alternate screws. So you're producing 50 per minute. You're producing 50 per minute. You're doing 50 per minute, and you're doing 50 per minute. And that should give us the total of 200 we need because you need 100 per minute and you need 100 per minute to make our rotors. Okay, so we got that figured out for, for rotors. Now for stators, um, we're going to need 30 pipe per minute and 80 wire per minute. Okay, so for pipe, um, I'm just going to line stuff up over here for now. Um, let's do, I think, pretty sure we're going to need two. Okay, let's look at that again. Uh, we only need 30 pipe per minute. So if we set this to pipe, yeah, we we're, we just need one machine overclocked to 150% and we're good to go there. I mean, we've, we've got plenty of uh, ability to make more steel with all the coal and stuff we're coming in on our truck line. Yeah, so we only need one of these overclocked uh, to 150% to produce... 30 per minute because each machine only needs 15 per minute that's easy enough okay and then for uh, the wire uh, we're gonna need uh, let's just put another one of these here yeah figuring out how I'm gonna arrange this is gonna be interesting definitely something I got to do off camera because it's gonna require a lot of thinking um, so we need wire here and you output 30 per minute and you output 30 per minute. So that would give us 60 if we have two of those. And how much do we need again? We need 40. So here again, I'm thinking that two machines overclocked to 150% is the way to go. It's, it's going to be a little more power hungry, but I mean, we're already, I mean, look at all the machines we're using here, you guys, just for one single motor production line. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, anyway, we need steel coming in to that guy. That's just one constructor. We've got tons and tons of additional steel that we can tap into here. I mean, we're not even using half of it at this point. Um, I have an extra coal line that we can run off of here. Or we even have, you know, really more coal coming into this line, so we could potentially just tap off the end of here. I'll have to do the math on that and make sure that that works out okay. Uh, but steel's not an issue. Copper, on the other hand, we're going to have to figure that one out. Um, so let's do the refiners first. So we're going to put two of these up, uh, overclocked 150%, which basically means 
40, I think they'll, that means they're going to need 20 copper per minute, if I'm doing that right. Um, so that means we need to provide 40 ingots to make that work. So if we go to a smelter now, um, how much do you output? You output 30 per minute. So here again, I mean, if we want to be streamlined, use less machines but more electricity, um, we simply just overclock this to 150%, and that'll get us our 40 per minute, which should feed two of these overclocked at 150%, also requiring 40 per minute, if I did the math right. And, of course, you know, I'll double-check everything and make sure I did do the math right when it's all put together. Um, and so then we just have to figure out our copper input. Um, so if you are overclocked, you're going to need 40 ore per minute. Now, do I have room over here to tap into this copper? Let's think about this for a second. We've got... Okay, so that's a Mark 1 line, and it's totally backed up. Just the fact that all this copper is backed up shows us right then and there that we are not utilizing everything that we can. So I'm going to have to see if I can pull 40 more copper ore out of this without overdoing it. And even if I can't as it currently is, we always have the option of overclocking the miner a little bit too if we need to. I just don't remember off the top of my head what the utilization of this is, but obviously we do have some to play with. I just don't know if it's 40 or per minute, so I'm going to have to figure that one out too. But it looks to me like we can make that work without having to top into a whole brand new uh, copper line. Yeah, because see, that's a pure node, and uh, I think that's a Mark I miner. So if that's a Mark I miner, then all we have to do is upgrade that to a Mark II, and we're golden, and we'll probably have more than we need. So I, yeah, I think we're fine on that. I really do. I think we're finding that. But anyways, holy cow, you guys, look at this. <laughs> I know it's a mess right now, but um, all these machines and, you know, and that's with overclocking several of them too, just for one motor production line. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. What are we going to get out of that? We're going to get five motors per minute. But again, the reason I'm doing it, doing this is because the motors are the most valuable item to, to put into the sink. Um, you know, out of the advanced steel production. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to have to figure this out in terms of how it's actually going to get connected and laid out. And, you know, if I decide to make two of these or four of these or however many, you know, we could, we could just continue on down there uh, on that end of the factory and keep setting them up. Or the other option is to go higher. Uh, that's also something I have to think about, too. I'm not entirely sure I'm going to keep using this building to go from here. We might build a new factory for the more advanced stuff in another location. That's something I have to think about, too. I, don't have the, I haven't made that decision yet. Uh, but anyway, the other thing I have to do, too, is I have to once again set up a, a temporary, um, the you know, frames, whatever the frame thing is that the space elevator needs and make those again because I stupidly <laughs> fed them all into the awesome sink without uh, keeping the, the 2500 I think it was or whatever that we needed. So that's not a big deal. I mean, they're not that hard to make. I've got everything to do it. So uh, I'll just have to do that off camera. All right, you guys. I think that's it for this episode. Um, this is going to take me a very long time to set up. Um, and I'm just going to have to think, have, have, a, have a big think about it and probably some trial and error and figure out the pattern and once that's figured out you know then uh you know then i can duplicate it later on the thing about this though the way that i i suggested we do it is it's going to use a lot of shards uh i don't know, know how many maybe a half a dozen or so so then if we decide to double the same setup later i mean that's really going to start consuming our power shards how many do i have right now on me i have 23 so yeah i don't know i'll have to think about that i might not use power shards i might just add more machines it's going to be bigger have a bigger footprint but it'll be more efficient on power and we're not using so many shards so i got to think about that too lots of stuff to think about 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to once again just remind you that I am going to be gone on a business trip until January 10th. I will be back on the 10th, but probably won't get back to satisfactory until a day or two after. Um, but I am definitely going to resume the series, so don't think it's canceled or anything. There's just going to be um, several days there where there's no new videos, but we will pick it up when I get back. Okay, so with that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video, and we'll see you sometime after the 10th. Bye-bye.